That's okay. Today, right now again, once again, it is Vacation Bible School Memory Verse time. Yay! Y'all not cheering. Come on, let's go. We're going to go over the verses for today. For Thursday, if you have your booklets open to the Memory Verse page, let's go ahead and begin. For the first one, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Acts 2nd chapter, 39th verse. Let's go over that one again. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. That's Acts 2:39. And the second one for today is one that we all need to know and the very shortest one that we have this year. It says, here we go, if ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Let's say that one again. If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14, verse 15. Now let's review, going back to the verses for Tuesday. You ready? The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Psalm 104, 31. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Philippians chapter 2, verse 2. And for Wednesday... Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Luke chapter 24, verse 45. For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. John 3rd chapter, verse 34. And again for today... The promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And the one we should all know, for if ye love me, keep my commandments. John chapter 14, verse 15. Thank you. The song of the month. Will we please stand and sing the song of the month, Keep Me Every Day?
let us repeat our word of the month. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Psalm 18, verse 30. Let us say it again. As for, As for God, God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Psalm 18, verse 30. At this time, our scripture was to be brought by Sister Brooklyn Bevel, then Sister Carrie Patrick, and our prayer would be brought by Sister Rachel Shanklin. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Hmm? Okay. Sister Carrie. I'll be reading Acts second chapter verses twenty one through twenty two. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. The word of the Lord is already blessed. Please bow your heads for prayer. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for showing us peace and grace and being our grace. Thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to live another day. Please guide us all and help us come closer to living like you every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. At this time, our selection, he has done great things for me. Okay. And this is the time we also have our offering. Give direction. Okay. It's out of hours over here, and this hour come. Thank you. I was just saying, thank you so much.
Let's just stand and do something all of us can sing together. Yeah, amen. Blessed are sure Jesus is mine. Oh, what a fault. Hour of salvation. Hour of salvation. Purchase. Precious of God, born of His Spirit, wash. Perfect submission, perfect submission. I and my Savior. Watching and waiting for King above, if it's good. Come on, ring it out. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praise and my Savior. All this, all this is, this is praising, praising my Savior. Bring it out. This is my story. This is my story. This is my song. Praise and my Savior. Oh, oh, this is. Praising Savior. Oh, thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much. This has been a joy to be in your presence these evenings. We, this is praise God for all blessings flow. This house of people to hear, pray. Come on and praise Him. And those in our and and those in our virtual audience, I want to thank you. Thank you. Let's thank God for our directress, Sister Minna Heath. I gave her, the, gave her the skeleton. She put the meat on the bones. God bless you. We've been looking at God. God. Let me, before we get started, make a few announcements. We want to thank God for all of you here. This has been a grand week. I want to thank our youth. We have a large number of youth here. And uh, pray for Sister Roche. Pierce and her sister did pass away in Texas. Request our, our prayers. Let's pray for her. And don't forget Sunday, 1 o'clock, Grace Baptist Gainesville for Reverend Demetri Williams' appreciation. Sunday, the Usher's Day. Also, when all our youth to come on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, start our youth meetings again in the Family Life Center in the gymnasium, as well as Sunday school, Sunday morning. And uh, I will still be teaching in this class in here, but but our youth will be in the Family Life Center. We want to get started. We're not going back to, to, a, a, to a new normal. We're just going forward. I said we're going forward in the, the name of the Lord. So God bless you. We have our books. We're not keep your books throughout the summer. Keep your books. And we'll be teaching some more on Wednesday evening because we, we just have not been able to go through, through everything that's in your book, but we want to continue to study our, our lesson. This is our guide, fruitful, and we looked at God, God, we looked at God. Number one, we, we believe God is our creator. Creator. Our God, who owns this world? God. Where'd you find that scripture? Psalm 24. Who said it? Psalm 24. The earth is, come on, say it with me. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, 
and they that dwell therein. Our God is creator. Our God owns this world. Uh, Genesis 1, 1 says what? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. We looked at creation. God, God created. And then when we look at Hebrews 1, God upholds all things by the word of his power. The book of Hebrews starts with, with one person. That, uh, the only book that starts that way. The book of Hebrews starts with who? God. God who has sundry times and diverse manners, spake unto the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the world, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the master on high, he upholds all things by what? The word of his power. And I tell you, if you if you work the word of God, the word of God will work for you. You see, if we work the word of God, we, the word of God will work for us. We, we don't just say what we want to say. We ought to always say what? The word of God says. Because God will act on his word. How did God make this world? He, he just spoke it into being. He, said, he just said, let there be and things happen, right? Let there be. Now, I tell you, he created. And, and when, he, when he got ready for... Uh, fish, what he, he just called fish from the water he had made, right? And when he got ready for grass, what did he do? Call it from the earth. When he got ready for man, what did he call man from? Himself. And everything God made that made had to stay connected to what he made it from. The, the fish had to stay connected to what? Water. The grass, trees must stay connected to the earth. And man must stay connected to God. To God. Yes, God, God fixed that way through, the, through, his, through his word. He traded. We, we looked at that, and I told you that God has designed purpose for our lives, and we pray for our lives. We looked just a little bit at, at uh, Saul, Saul of Tarsus. Um, uh, he was a persecutor of the church. He, he was injurious, but God, he met God, and God changed him. Let's, let's just turn to it on page 10. Page 10, page 10 in your book. Keep your books, because God deal with us individually. I told you, our God is omnipresent. What that mean? He's everywhere at the same time. Our God is everywhere. He runs into himself. There's nowhere. Uh, the psalmist said in Psalm 139, where can I go from his presence? If you go down in hell, he is there. If you go up to heaven, wherever you go, God is already what? There. Now, don't go to hell. We're going to heaven, right? And the only way to go to heaven is through who? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Okay. Look at it. Saul, a persecutor of the church of God. He, look what, on the A, y'all see that? He set out to destroy Christianity. He set out to, to destroy Christianity. He was zealous in his mission. He approved the stoning of Stephen. But guess what happened? He was converted on the Damascus Road. The Lord appeared to Saul, and Saul acknowledged Jesus as what? Lord, and whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Did, did he get himself right to be saved? No. Jesus saved him just just as he was. We come to him just as I am. Yes. Uh, and Saul surrendered his life to the Lord. Saul became a he became a soul winner for Christ. Uh, God put his past behind him. Did you know he put your past? What does he do with your sins? He remembers them no more. He remembers them no more. So let us just look, read some of it from the turn to the ninth chapter of Acts, chapter 9. Chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Because, and, and look at it. Saul was a crazy man. I told you earlier, Saul was crazy. He was, he was killing saints, putting saints in prison, and, uh, he was against the church, 
but he met the Lord. So the help, the help for this world is what? It's what? Meet Jesus. Meet Jesus. Meet Jesus. Acts chapter 9. We, let, let's look at it. We see a close-up. And I told you God is omnipresent, but he will manifest himself to us. God manifests himself. He can individually manifest himself to That would happen to Saul. God manifests himself to Saul through Jesus Christ. How do we come to God? Through Jesus Christ. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That would, that's what Jesus said. Jesus, no man, our God, create. Can anybody else create a universe? And, and, and listen, he didn't create a multiverse, it's a universe. You know what I mean? What? Together. Together. The sun, the sun never, never interferes with the, the moon, right? The moon gets its light from the, from the sun. Yeah. God is a God of unity. He's a God of unity. And if you ever want this world to be saved, what must the church be? Unified. Now I know more people eat apples than eat lemons, but you never seen a lemon get mad with an apple, right? And I said, this, wherever, wherever God puts you, serve where God placed you. Because when, when person get tired of apple sauce, they gonna want some lemonade. I said, they said, God has purpose. God, God has purpose for every what? One of us. We are members in the, in the body of Jesus Christ. The body is the church. And to be a member of the church of Jesus Christ is the most marvelous experience anybody can have in this world because the church is God's only business in this world. He, the church. The judgment, judgment is restrained right now because God got the church in this world. And, and one day when he takes the church out of this world, what's going to happen? Tribulation. The tribulation, then the great tribulation. It's going to be chaos in this world. And then when he gets finished with, he's going to, oh yeah, someone's, he's going he gonna to burn it up and we have a new heaven and a new, come on, let's look, I'm, you know, come on, let's, let's uh, uh, act chapter 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. I want to, he will arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem this way, in the way. They were not called Christians right now. They were called people of the way. And if I find any of this way, any calling on the name of the Lord, I will uh, bring them, I will arrest them and bring them to Jerusalem. That's, that's his mission. And guess what? Who did he get his letters from? The high priests, religious people, high priests. Who, turned, who, who put Jesus on trial? The high priests, religious folks. It's one thing to be religious, but it's another to really know who Jesus is. Christians have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Look what, look what happened. There. Come on. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? What voice was that? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's calling every sinner. He knows you by your name. He knows your name. He, and once you say he, he knows every one of us by our name. Yeah. You're not a number. You are, he knows us by what? Name. Name. Saul, Saul, why persecuted I mean? Got his attention. What did Saul say? And he said, who art thou? What did he call Jesus? Lord, and whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He's a bad man. He's a crazy man. Well, I told you, I preached about that. Saul was crazy. Stephen was stoned. James was beheaded. They put Peter in prison, but but God is still in charge. He, he's a crazy man. He's the man who is persecuting the church. 
And, he, and, and, and he, but, he, but when he met Jesus, what did he call him? Lord. Now, when people change, the Lord changed him. And he, and he was changed from a persecutor to a preacher. And I'm going to say this again. When people change, allow people to change. Sometimes I find more judges come to church than they go to the courtroom. Nobody got to be the judge in anybody. Some, some people judge enough for I'll be, I'll be put on trial themselves. <laughs> yeah. He called him Lord. That changes. God can take you where you are and make you what he wants you to be. We have another example in this. Another example. We are trying to get to him today where I said keep your book because even David, little Rudy, David out there, all the other boys look handsome and tall, handsome, but God, God can take an uncomely person. And God said, he's a man. I said, come on, let's, come on back to this, come on. And the Lord said unto him, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the prick. And he what? Trembling and astonished, saying, Lord, what will thou have me to do. Anybody he ever saved, God never saved anybody to do nothing. Yeah, and the year King Urza died, I saw the Lord high lifted up. Who, 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 yeah, who said that? Isaiah said that. Then once God purged him and saved him, he asked the Lord, Lord, God said, Who will go for me? What did Isaiah say? Hear my Lord, send me. When God saves you, he saves you to do a work. Not any work. But the work that he has assigned you, we have spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Okay. Uh, and the Lord said unto him, what? Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Go down to, go down to verse 10. Go down to verse, we're going to follow it because he's saved now. He said, but I'm, I'm going to get to, he's saved, but God wants him to be filled with the Holy Ghost. He's saved, he's blind, but God want him to be filled. Did you know every believer is commanded to be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. We want to get to that. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. That means God is in control. God is in control. Jesus controls you. Go down to verse 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the, the, and he said Behold, here I am. God appeared to him. How did God appear to him? That's a manifestation, right? See, God is spirit. Spirit, he, he manifests himself. God has manifested himself to, I guess, everybody in this house. You just got to acknowledge who he is. He has manifested himself. You, everybody in the house, got some spirit, spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. I suspect everybody in the house got the gift of prophecy. If, uh, I don't have time to go there. That gift of prophecy. That's a spiritual gift. That gift, that person is, uh, is exaltation, encouragement, and comfort. How many of you are ever comfort anybody? Yes. That's a, did you know that's a spiritual gift? How many of you ever, ever encouraged in a, in a, anybody? That's a, that's a spiritual gift. Don't have time to turn that, but, but uh, write it down. First Corinthians. 14 chapter that third verse. He said, he said, I would that you prophesy more than you speak in tongues. See, there's some spiritual gifts that bring, bring attention to the person. But encouragement, exaltation, comfort, you didn't know you had that gift, did you? you but it had to be pointed out. You got some gift. God has, God has gifted you. God has put some gifts. God has put some gifts in you. Come on. Uh, what? And uh, that's, I told you, that was a manifestation. God manifests himself to who? Ananias. He, he, and Ananias said, Behold, I am here what? Lord. Get to know him so that when he manifests himself to you, you know that's, that it's God talking to you. He talked to him through a what? A vision. God talks to you. Did you know he talks to you? If you take time to listen, now sometimes, sometimes, I can be guilty too. Sometimes I got the TV on. I'm, sometimes I ought to be praying. I, I watched late last night, driving Miss Daisy. <laughs> got all entangled in that. Put my Bible down and start watching that. <laughs> okay. You do it sometimes too, don't you? 
But, but God will manifest himself to you. You listen to, okay. Uh, and, the Lord, and the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays. Put a pen in there. Behold, he had been a persecutor, but now he's, he's, he's been converted. And what he's doing now? Praying. He's praying. And no harm. They just saying that no harm in a praying child. Behold, he what? Prayeth. And and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Did you know God is intelligent? God works on both ends. God works with Saul, but he also works with Ananias, right? Somebody comes and says, the Lord told me to tell you. Well, he hadn't told me anything. <laughs> He's too intelligent. To, yeah, he works both ways. Okay. Now, now, Ananias, Ananias said, like some of us, Saul got a reputation. Reputation, reputation. With, yeah, let's see what Ananias says to the Lord. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints in Jerusalem. I heard, I heard about his past. But what, what does God do with your past once he saves you? Put it behind you. You live beyond your past. Don't live in your past. Don't live with your guilt. Don't live with guilt. Let, let, let God reveal it. Let grace remove it. And God's grace can remove it. Okay. Uh, come on. And, he, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. He said he got he got authority from the chief priest, but who whose authority is above God authority? Now the, now the chief priest was just a, just a, a, a little group, a, a group of a group of religious folks, the, the Sanhedrin council, like like some church, it got rules, constitutions, and all that, and they put it above the Bible. Yeah, I mean, the, our constitution said yes. And Jesus is saying, "This do and rem Jesus said, remember me, but you got your own thing. Like they, like they had over there, you heard me say this so many times, they had over the, over the door, Jesus only, and a wind came and blew the Jesus, J-E-S off Jesus' name. What that left up there? Us only. And somebody said, somebody said, y'all need to fix that. It got us only. And somebody in man corner said, it's been us church all the time. <laughs> and that way there's a lot of places, it's out. Yeah. The church, but... Who, who, who died for the church? Who shed, we saw it yesterday. Who shed his blood for the church? And the church must be operated by what? The word of God. Not by our bylaws, rules, but by the word of God. The word of God. Okay. Uh, so he has authority. Who, he talking to God. He telling God about a chief priest got some authority. God is a, let me tell you yeah we got a supreme court but who is supreme God is supreme who, has, who is sovereign God God is a, God is a supreme ruler and, and one day the supreme court got to bow yeah we'll come up there and every knee must bow and every tongue got to stand before the Lord all of us must stand before a righteous God we must all stand before the judgment seat of Christ to give it an account of the deeds done in this body, whether they're good or bad. But when you're saved, when you're saved, we have a, an advocate. When I stand before the judgment of our God, the old account was settled long ago. That's a great song. That's a great song. That's good singing. Long ago, long ago. I ain't going to sing. But I know those songs, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why this modern church got to make up stuff to sing. I wonder about that sometimes. All account. Let me think. Yeah, but it was it was sell long ago. Okay. Yeah. Where was it sell? On a hill called. But look what the Lord said. Now he said he talked about this man got authority. What did the Lord said? 
The Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a what? Chosen vessel unto me. Who made him a chosen vessel? God did through Jesus. He's a chosen, the persecutor is now a chosen vessel. Isn't that something? To bear my name before Gentiles. Yeah, and king and the children of Israel. He, can, he got to go now and stand before. God can take you where you are. Let me tell you something about God. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, y'all know, where was Jesus born at? Bethlehem of Judea. At the same time Jesus was being born down in Bethlehem of Judea, Saul of Tarsus was being born down at Tarsus. Yeah, God worked it that. See, you'd be surprised how God works your life. God works it that way. God, he, he was being born down in Tarsus. And Saul's parents wanted him to have a good education. They, they sent him to the University of Tarsus and he, he matriculated there and they, and they sent him to Jerusalem he had a great teacher, the greatest theologian and scholar of that day. What was his name? Y'all know his name. Gamaliel, yes. He matriculated there. And so when God got ready for a chosen vessel, God had him all ready. Now he thought he was going to be just be a, a, a persecutor and all that, but God had, God had things in store for him. I got a good friend. I got a good friend. He, 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 was, a, he was a street person, street person, street person. And, 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 uh, and God called him to preach. And my God, and, and, and that night he did his trials, and guess what? All those buddies off the street came. <laughs> God can do that, you know that? God can take a dope pusher and make him a, a preacher, and all the dope pushers will get saved and come follow Jesus. Yeah, and, and when they do that, y'all let them alone. You, not, you are not God. Not y'all now, I'm talking, I'm talking to other folks that do that, no other folks, yeah, <laughs> yeah. God made him. You know, he's a chosen vessel. He's he going to prophesy for king. Let's see what happened. Go down to verse 17. And Ananias went his way and he entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, what he called him? Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou might receive thy sight and be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. He's already saved, but he, you need to be, we are commanded to be what? Filled with the Holy Ghost. We are, you know, you, you command, it just is, there's a verse that says, be not drunk with wine, where it's excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. If God gives you a command, uh, it's just as much sin to, uh, to not be filled with the Holy Ghost that it is to what? to be excess with wine. Did you know that? When you read that verse, that's in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. We are command every believer, when you feel the Holy Ghost, God is in control. Boy, if everybody in church will feel with the Holy Ghost, you, you have fire all, you have fire striking all over the church, won't you? I'm gonna prove that to you. Turn to, turn to, turn to, turn to, turn to, uh, Acts 4. Turn back to Acts 4. Because what we do for the Lord ought not to be worship, ought not to be just routine. Ought to be spirit fear, spirit led, spirit fear, spirit. Yeah. Uh, Acts 4, go down. And it all, and the church is a what kind of place? A praying place, a praising place, praising God. Go down to that 31st verse. Go down to the 31st verse. Look, look at the church. Look at the church. The church. Verse 31. Talk about the Holy Ghost because we got a study about the Holy Ghost. Go down to, to, to verse 30, Acts 4 31. Come on. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with what? Bold. Just the church. The church met together. It said, and what did they do? They prayed. They prayed. They prayed. And I tell you, uh, good praying is praying, biblical praying. Uh, just read prayers. David, when David fell in sin, David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness. 
he, he prayed, prayed, created me a clean heart, renewed the right spirit within me. Paul prayed, enlighten the eyes of my understanding. I may know the hope of your calling for my life. Give me spiritual knowledge and wisdom and understanding of who you really are. I want to know you, Lord. I want to know. Okay, he prayed. The church prayed, and the place were what? Shaken where they were. Assembled how? They were together. They were assembled together, and they were what? All filled with the put a pen. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they did what? Speak the word of God with boldness. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. Gives you boldness. 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 And, uh, and that brings us in your book. Turn over, turn over to page turn over, turn over to turn over to page 21. Keep your book. We're going to study it even on Wednesday night. We're going to look at the, turn over to page page 21. Jesus gives commandment to his apostles. Jesus instructs the apostles to, to do what? Remain where? Well in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. Let's look at that command. Turn, turn, why are you turning? Turn to Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. That's back to your left. Luke chapter 24. He commands them to remain in Jerusalem. He had given them, he gave them the commission. Luke chapter 24. They read thirty verse 48. Because he tells us something here. Luke chapter 24, verse 48. And, I, and, and this applies apply to every believer. But you can't do it until you have what? Power. I mean, whatever you do for God, if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, it's just like driving a nail without a hammer. What you doing? Just working yourself up. Oh, come on, verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. What things? What things? Look at verse 46. And thus and said unto them, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. What do we witness? The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Because whosoever Believe in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shall be what? Saved. saved. And the early church, they got saved every day. But, but he's a year witness. But you can't witness until look at verse 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon ye, but tell ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with what? Power from on high, power from on high. Turn over to Acts chapter 1. To your right, to Acts chapter 1. Power, you need power from on high. Power. Now he told them that, but they still not feel, they still don't see it. They still do not see it. They do not see it. They, they still, you won't see it until, until the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost it must be, it takes the Holy Ghost to, to keep up. Uh, Saint alive, keep a church alive. Look, chapter, chapter one. Okay, verse six. Come on. Now he told them, be, he told them, go to Jerusalem till you be endured with what? Power. Holy Ghost. Power. Look at verse, chapter verse six. When they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom, Israel? Now he told them to go there, go on to Jerusalem and be in good. And they still talking about this earth. This earth. But, but you, you know what they're asking him? When are you going to overthrow Rome and put the Jews back in charge? And Jesus talking about a spiritual kingdom and they talking about an earthly kingdom. And let's see how Jesus answered them in verse 7. And he said unto them, 
It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. We have the commission to carry this gospel throughout the whole world. And we just look at what's going on in these four walls, don't we? But you'd be surprised who gets saved outside of these four walls. You, you just look at the four walls. And but we have a commission to lose it, not the world. Not the world, no. No. Uh, Dr. Sandy Ray was preaching to us, preachers, he said, he said that some preachers, they're so local till they think God is a local deity. Local. He said, he, said to a, he said to a preacher one day, come on, join the district association. No, I'm not going to do that. Come. All y'all do, the big fish, big fish, eat up the little fish. He said, well, I tell you what you do. You come on and join and grow and get big because if you stay where you are, you're going to be it. <laughs> yeah. So local. God, God is a worldwide God. God is bigger than Elizabeth. God is bigger than Tuscaloosa. God is bigger than America. Yeah, bigger. I got the foreign mission, the foreign mission news today. Yesterday, I think it was foreign mission because, because we, support, we support what? Foreign mission. Where, well, where they're digging, digging wells in Africa where they don't have pure water. You know, we, when I went to preach for the foreign mission in Philadelphia, you know, we took enough to dig four wells, you know, four wells in Africa because that's because they're hurting and there's a whole world and I know you, I know you just turned the faucet on right but there are some places that people there's a whole world we, well, we're commanded to be what come on fear of the Holy Ghost let's see what happened let's see what happened I want to see what they, they did they did go and they started a prayer meeting that's uh, in the same chapter here uh, the same Chapter, come and help me find it. Where they in where the prayer meeting? What voice? What voice is it? Twelfth voice? Yeah, come on, that's good. Come on. What, then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day journey. And when they were coming in, they went up into an where they are bought, look who is at the prayer meeting. Where they are bought, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Aphel, and Simon, the Zitlock, and Judas, the brother of James, the, the, the men, the whole family, the whole family. Look what it says. These all continue with one accord in prayer and cup supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. The whole, the, did you know prayer meeting is for the whole family? They prayed, and let's see what happened when they prayed. Go to the chapter two. It's in your book. It's in your book. Go to chapter two. Go, they are praying. They start the prayer meeting. He did not tell them how long to pray. He didn't tell them how long to pray. He just told them to wait. Wait. You're witnesses. Don't you go witness now. Don't you go. Wait till you get some. Wait till you get some power. Don't try to drive the car. You go get some gas in it. Because you won't go anywhere. You, gonna, you just be sitting on a brand new car in one place. Good looking car. No gas in it. That's that what he's saying. He's saying. Don't go until you, be, until you have power. Come on. Look what happened. And, and, and guess what? Sunday is, what Sunday is Sunday? First Sunday, but it's what? Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday. Uh, Pentecost Sunday. Yes, uh, uh, Jesus died during Passover, but the Holy Ghost came to the church during Pentecost, 50 days later. Uh, Sunday is 50 days from Passover, from Easter, this, this, this coming Sunday, when the Holy Ghost came to the, to the church. Sunday is, and it happened during the Feast of Pentecost. Okay, let's see, let's see what happened. Uh, come on, read this quickly because my time is up. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord 
in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and they set upon each of them. Now that's the, now that's the second time you've seen tongues. The first time you saw tongues in that 16th chapter of Mark where he said, you shall speak with what? New tongues. That means once you're saved, your conversation will change. You won't have the same gospel. You won't have the same uh, cursing tongue. Now, it, it might slip back in sometimes. You know you messed up. P Peter was a cursor. I wanted to get to Peter. Peter was a cursor. And every now and then, Peter, that cursing slipped back in on Peter. Did y'all know that? Peter said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be. Okay, I, I want you to say, shall be. That wasn't the Bible. Peter wrote, Peter, Peter wrote what Mark, when you read the gospel of Mark, Peter wrote what Mark preached. Yes. Okay, he was a Okay. You see, what kind of tongues you see right here? Cloven tongues as of what? Fire. Set up on each of them. Now I didn't say it was fire, as of fire. Set up on each of them. Frequent language. And they were all fear with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. You got another what tongue is that? Other tongues. These are languages. Language. As the Spirit gave them utterance and there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and with this one north abroad the mother two came together and were confound because here, here come the language because that every man heard them speak in his what? own language. Everybody heard the gospel in their own what? Language. language. In their own language. Now you got three tongues, right? You got, you, got, you got new tongues in Mark 16. You got cloven tongues sitting up on them. You got, you got uh, uh, other tongues here, languages. And, and I don't have time to get there, but you're going over to the First Corinthians, the 13th chapter. You got the gifts of tongues. And then you get to the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians, you got an unknown tongue, which is a heavenly language that, 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 that you speak to God in. Yeah. Uh, and that can be one of our most confusing areas, but that's not contingent on salvation. You are saved by believing that Jesus is Son of God. And then God gives you gifts. He had feel. My time is up. Any questions coming? God, my time is up. Y'all good? I'm enjoying it. I could do this all night. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. God bless y'all. God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. He is Lord. Y'all come on in. He is. He is risen from and he Every knee, every knee shall, or every tongue con that Jesus Christ is. He is Lord, He is Lord, He is Lord. Oh, He is Lord. Our young people come up to the choir, they're going to sing this evening. He is risen from the. They're going to sing, come on to the choir. He is Lord. Every knee, every knee, every knee shall, and every tongue. God bless you, young people. Come on to the choir. That Jesus Christ. I love him. I love him. Oh, I love him. Oh, he is risen 
from and I every knee every knee shall and tongue confess that Jesus Christ. We're going to extend the invitation. Now, we've had three to come this week. The others come on to Jesus. Come on. The invitation extended while you have time. Come to him. Come to him. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. He, anybody here knows he's Lord. He is Lord. Oh, he is Lord. Ring it out. Ring it out. The, the door of the church is open. He is Lord. Ring it out. Oh, he is risen from. He is alive. And he Oh, every knee shall and every get a mic that Jesus Christ. There is none but the righteous. Oh, none but the right. Oh, none but the right shall see God. God bless you. God bless you. None but the right. Oh, none but the right. Oh, none but mm -hmm. We have Blair Belville, who is a candidate for baptism. Blair Belville, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. The Bible declares, you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Say that with me now. I believe that Jesus, that Jesus is the Son of God. Is the Son of God. And I give my life. And I give my life to Him. To Him. Come on, praise God. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I love Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. Now baptize your Sunday morning. So the Swift tell you how to be ready. Oh, I love. The door is open. Yeah. There is none but the right. Glory to God. Oh, none but the right. Oh, none but the right. Before the director to come, let me make one announcement from our president of our Alabama Baptist State Women Convention. The convention will convene June 13th, 14th, and 15th. This is from Sister Max, President Maxine Abrams at New Bethlehem Baptist Church, where Reverend T.J. Rogers is the pastor. It open at Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and also we have deliberation throughout the day. And at 8.30 on Wednesday morning, lecturers and the present address immediately following the lecturers. And after that, we have uh, sermons and, and deliberation. You'll be invited to be a part of the Alabama State Missionary Baptist Convention. Dr. Maxine Abrams, Sister Maxine Abrams, is our esteemed, honored president. God bless you. Thank you so much. We are baptized Sunday morning.
just take a moment. I'm not going to try to call everybody's name, but I just want to thank, thank all of you who participated, um, helping with the Vacation Bible School. Uh, the, I, I had to have help. You know, I didn't do this myself. The Lord had to be in it at the beginning. Then I had uh, visions about who I was going to get to help, talking to you, and everybody has been so wonderful. And Reverend Swift always say that one thing the Lord wants for his church is for his church to be unified. Unity has happened this week. You have come in graciously and helped make this Vacation Bible School 2022 a success. And your pastor has enjoyed teaching. He always enjoys teaching, doesn't he? And we have been blessed by hearing the word. But I want to thank the media staff, the assistant, Sister Elois Day and Dr. Erica Bevel, the office staff, Dr. Karen Jackson, Brother Coleman, the devotional leaders, just all of you. I'm just, it's a, I have a whole list, but I'm not going to try to read all of them. But I just want to thank all of you for your assistance in helping make this a success. Now, I also want to thank our pastor. We always enjoy his teaching and his preaching. And I always hear people talking about how they enjoy listening to his teaching and his preaching. We always bless when we hear him. And we thank him for his time. He always gives time in teaching the word of God. And he's so profound about it. And he's so sincere. And he's so anointed. And every time we sit under him, we enjoy listening to him. And to that end, we want to say thank you, Pastor. And this is on behalf of the Vacation Bible. Now, I have no other comments unless Reverend Swift has some remarks and he can give the benediction. Well, after, after you start, we can. Okay, let's do the, let's do the, the scriptures. Let's do the, the congregation. You'll recognize. Put the mic on. We are so thankful for our youth. We want to thank our youth workers. Thank you so much. Come on, praise God for our youth. And and let me just let me just say, youth day is the fourth Sunday in this month. We want all of y'all to be in the choir the fourth Sunday. Y'all are here now. Thank you so much. And uh, keep your books and memorize the memory verses. Thank you so much. And on Saturday, youth meeting Saturday morning at ten o'clock. Please come. Sunday school, youth will be in Sunday school on Sunday morning, immediately following 8 o'clock, so around 9 o'clock. Thank you so much, youth. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Come on, let's give God the praise again for our youth. Thank you so much, so much.
Let me just mention to for parents, please bring them Saturday morning. We will we will formulate the the youth day program on Saturday morning. All you please parents have them here. After the benediction, after the benediction, we're asking everybody to remain seated until the children have been dismissed. May the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought, brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sea, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. We are asking now that the young people, the five-year-olds first, that the little ones come down, and the little ones, as you leave, parents, you can leave with your children. Dr. Jackson, you just Dr. Jackson has raised her hand. She wants you to come in that direction. So come down, little ones. 